uh, is my co-facilitator for the conference, and Maureen is walking this way at the moment, or not. She's still handling out schedules. Uh, we have a, a really splendid day planned, and thank you all for coming. I think it was in 2004, uh, Bishop Thomas Gumbleton was here, and it was uh, a very wonderful conference. Uh, he and Captain Kelly were our main speakers, keynote speakers, and um, I remember the introduction I gave uh, for Bishop Gumbleton that year, and it's chased uh, by a, a tiger and, and she's running and she's running and the tiger is getting closer and she comes to this cliff and there's nothing to do except grab hold of a vine and hang off the cliff where the tiger couldn't reach her and so she grabs hold of this vine and lowers herself down just out of reach and she looks down below and there are tigers circling down below and there's the tiger standing up above. And then she looks. And she sees there's a mouse gnawing at the vine. <laughs> <laughs> and just off to the right and up above, there's this beautiful, magnificent, wild strawberry growing. So she reaches up and she picks the strawberry and she eats it. And it's the most delicious strawberry she has ever had. So the tigers above and the tigers below and hanging from the vine are life. And there's always a mouse gnawing. But today, Bishop Gumbleton is our strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> so take this moment and savor it. So please welcome Bishop Thomas Gumbleton. message to penetrate us and move us to greater commitment and responsibility for the flourishing of life 
And so we'll spend some time in silent prayer and reflection. And let us pray. O oh God of peace, whose presence and blessing we seek, hear our voice, instill into our hearts the strength to respond to hatred with love, to suffering with faith and hope, to respond to injustice with solidarity, to violence with peace, and to conflict with reconciliation. We come before you, O oh God of peace, in hope that you might enlighten us so that we find compassion and understanding for others and peace within ourselves. We come before you in hope that healing embraces all people. Help us to convey peace to all whom we meet. And we make our prayer in the spirit of unity that all may be one. Amen. James Douglas' book is that he was killed because he was waging peace. A lot of people would probably say, oh, that's not possible. But I challenge you to read the book and come to your own conclusion. To me, it's very clear that John Kennedy was waging peace step by step. And so I, I mentioned this only to say that committing ourselves to nonviolence, to active love, to transform our world that way is not just a pipe dream. Love is the most powerful, transformative agent we have in our world, in our whole human history. The transforming power of love. That's the only thing that can end war and bring peace. And so, for me, the challenge to all of us today and for the future is to open ourselves to that conversion. To be a person really totally committed to the idea, I will not use violence. See, and that means you work against violence at every level in our society. And, and we live in a society where there is so much violence. In other parts of the world, violence. The violence of injustice, but also the violence of killing, destroying lives. We have to be converted to work against every form of violence. And then, most of all, to end the violence of war so that We'll carry out that cry of Pope Paul VI, John Paul II. War never again. No, never again. War. We will commit ourselves to being artisans of peace, change our world through the transforming power of love. Thank you.